Hey everybody, today I'm going to be talking about heat maps and heat maps are a great way to visualize locations of data and kind of like overall cumulative values. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's a great way to be able to view um, locations, aggregate locations, what's going on with a location on a soccer pitch. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the notebook that we used last video and we're going to take that code and we're just going to put a heat map on top of it. A heat map is actually super simple. Yeah, we're going to be using um, a library called Seaborn, which is pretty easy to use. So we're going to use that and then I'll show you how to do that. And then you should be good to go to be able to create your own visualizations, your own type of stuff that you're wanting to put out on, put out on Twitter, on Instagram, on a blog really any way that you're wanting to get into uh, visualization, uh, sports analytics, anything like that. So be sure if you're interested in this kind of stuff to hit the subscribe button. I really appreciate everybody who joins along and joins the community. And so, so if you have any questions, be sure to reach out to me on Twitter or you can just leave a comment below. I'll be sure to respond to it. But anyways, without any further ado, let's jump into the heat maps. Okay, so we're in the actual notebook. This notebook is from the notebook that we used in the previous video to create the pass map, which you can see is this. So we created this in the past video. I would recommend going and watching that video just so you know, one, how to create the pitch, which I have a video for that as well, but create the pitch and then create the actual pass um, map on here and it'll kind of set you up for understanding what's going on. It'll be a lot easier just to go over this heat map and create this heat map. It'll be fairly easy. So what we're going to do, we're just going to go back to the top just to kind of make sure we got all the basics down. So what we're going to be using is this, um, library module right here. So we're going to be using Seaborn. And Seaborn is essentially just ways to plot data and create different types of graphs. It makes it easier to plot than a couple than using like matplotlib, for example. You can plot certain types of graphs easier, such as box plots, uh, violin plots, um, swarm plots as well. So we're going to be using this. So make sure you import Seaborn as SNS, and that's what we're going to be using. Then make sure you read in your data. Once again, just to go over the data, you need to have your X and Y coordinates for this one. You don't necessarily need your end X and end Y to make the heat map. You just need X and Y coordinates of where the pass initiated from. And you can do heat maps as well with stuff that's not just passes. Like you could do defensive actions, for example, or if you wanted to do shot locations, you could do that. But Basically, we're gonna come down into where we created our pitch, and we are going to, so you should have the figure set up, um, the pitch created, uh, you should have drawn the pitch, inverted the y-axis, and then use this for loop to plot the actual, the actual passes. So what we're gonna do is right in between where it says pitch.draw and the invert axis, we're just gonna Hit enter a couple of times and we'll hit and we'll make a comment of create the heat map. And that is my sister texting me. So we're going to create the heat map. And basically, the heat map is super simple, especially with um, Seaborn. So we're just going to say KDE. We're going to make a variable called KDE because we're creating something called a KDE plot. And so we're going to say KDE equals SNS. So we're going to call the Seaborn library. And then we're going to use a function in Seaborn called KDE plot. And this is how we're going to create the pass map. So in here, it just, I like to do it like this, just so it looks a little bit nicer and easier to read. But the first thing you need to do is pass in your data frame um, X locations. So we're, the easiest way to do this is we're going to say data frame and then in brackets, not equals, just in brackets, our X column, then put a comma. I mean, you don't have to format it like this. It's just how I prefer to do it. 
and then do data frame y. And so this, these are our basic, uh, and so these are our basic arguments that we're gonna need in a KDE plot. So if I plot this, you'll see it'll plot and it looks like this. It's not filled in, so we're, all, we're gonna make it uh, look a little bit better, but it's not filled in. And, but this is like our heat map right here. This is what a KDE plot looks like. So it has like the biggest circle right here is where the most actions are happening and then it kind of branches out, you know, like a heat map looks like. So what we need to do is add in something, another argument called shade. So this is gonna shade the heat map and we just set that equal to true. And so now it looks like this. I mean, we're almost there. This, is, this isn't what we want it to look like, but the other thing we need to do is set it so that it's not shading the lowest values. So it's not shading the zero values, for example, because that's what it's doing down here is all this stuff is just zero values that it's shading. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say shade lowest equals false. So if we do that, then we have a heat map. And that's really the basic, most simple way to create a heat map. You can create it like this. Obviously there's a couple of things that I don't personally like. For one, it's covering the pitch lines. And two, I don't necessarily like this color. Um, and so what you can do to fix um, this, and you can make it a little bit more transparent, and what I like to do is to set an argument called alpha equal to anything lower really than 0.5. I usually do 0.2, so I'll do alpha equals 0.2, and there you can see it's a lot more transparent. It's gonna be more in the background, which is what we're kinda hoping. It, it's kind of like a more background visualization type thing. So we're gonna set that equal to alpha equals 0.2. And then as well, you can see that it doesn't, it has like five layers. Let's say one, two, three, four, five. It has about six or seven layers. So what we're gonna do is we're actually gonna set something called N levels. It'll make it look a little bit more smooth. We'll say N underscore levels equals and then I usually like to do anywhere between 15 and 25. I mean, you just kind of have to sit and mess around with it. So then it looks something more like that. It looks like that might be a little too much actually for this. When you have lower amounts of data, it it's harder to set the end levels. So like a single game like this where Messi only played a half, didn't have a ton of passes. But I mean, 10 seems to be a little bit better than uh, 15. And so that is the simplest way to make a heat map. I, the last thing that you should know is something called C map. So the cool thing about Seaborn is they have custom color maps and they already have like pre-built in color maps that are going to allow you to change the color of this. So the one that I like to use and that you might see in my work is called magma. So you set that and then it looks kind of like a magma heat map where it has hot in the middle and then out on the sides is kind of cooler colors. So that's the one I like to use. I mean, you can even set the alpha to be a little bit higher. You know, if you wanna see more, you can set it like 0.5 and let you see it a little bit better. So that's really the basics of heat maps. It's super simple. One other thing I'm gonna throw in, I did this accidentally before I started recording this video but there's these two arguments right here. It's plt.xlim and plt.ylim. So I'm gonna comment these out just so we can kind of see what happens if I get rid of them. So if you don't put those in, then it's gonna plot these on the outside of your pitch, which looks like garbage. So we don't want that. So what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be saying plt.xlim. So our plot x limit is gonna be the length of the pitch from zero to 120. And then the plot y limb is from zero to 80. So that is how we limit the x and y axis so it doesn't go outside of the pitch. And you do that and you have a nice looking heat and pass map to be able to put on Twitter or 
put in a portfolio or show your mom or something. Anyways, that is the basics of heat maps. As you can tell, it's super simple. It's only this code right here, along with importing the pitch and the actual different um, module library from Seaborn. So be sure to try this out. And if you do create one of these, be sure to tag me on Twitter as well. If you post it on Twitter, I'm, I'm really like my DMS are open. You can DM me and ask me questions and I try to respond, um, as quickly as possible. So be sure to do that and comment down below if you have any questions or as well, if you've made it this far in the video, comment who your favorite player is, and I will give you a thumbs up or a thumbs down based on my opinion of that. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and this was Heat Maps. If you can, be sure to subscribe. Um, I'm going to be coming out with a lot more data analyst, data science, machine learning kind of stuff, as well as more soccer visualizations. So thanks for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.